El tercer convidado eh, también ha arribado a Barcelona fa poc temps, al 2011. Ha arribado de, de Gran Bretaña, de Inglaterra, de Inglaterra. Y es un director coral, un músico que ha fundado al Barcelona English Choir. Un cor, una coral para per tothom, para que tothom y pugui cantar. Benvingut Ed Alcro. Good evening. My name is Ed Oldcroft, and I, uh, as Patricia has said, work with choirs in Barcelona. Um, the first thing I want to say is that every single person in the world is able to sing. And that really is the main message of all of my work up to this point. So just to tell you a little bit about why and how I arrived here, and then I'll tell you more about the Barcelona English Choir itself. So I was working, uh, I, I studied at Cambridge University, I did a, a music degree at Cambridge, uh, which was a very formal, uh, very heavy education in music. And then following my degree, uh, I, I left Cambridge University with a huge desire to do the absolute opposite of what I learnt at the university. So I wanted to go and access communities that are everywhere around us and engage with communities in making music. So I started training at a place called the Sage Gateshead in the north of England. And I spent six years working on a whole variety of projects, working with uh, very young children, working with um, older people, working in prisons, uh, working with homeless people, working with people with disabilities, working with uh, adults, every group you can imagine. And for me, the, most, the strongest feeling I had working with music in these areas was how much of a social glue music can be and especially singing. The act of singing in a group together with other people is a truly transformative experience. And for me, this is what I wanted to dedicate my career to doing. So, after six years of working at the Sage Gateshead, uh, for entirely personal reasons, my wife wanted to move to Barcelona. I loved mm. Barcelona. She's an English teacher, so we moved to Barcelona. And I really wanted to, uh, to engage with the very rich choir uh, life that there exists in Barcelona. It's a very rich tradition here in Catalonia, and I'm very aware of, of how many choirs there are and, and what wonderful things go on here. Uh, so I wanted to offer the opportunity to anyone who wanted to sing to come and join us uh, in the Barcelona English Choir. And there are really three aspects to the choir and how, how they work. So the first aspect is coming to improve your English, uh, to mix with other people and speak in English to improve your language skills. The second, and I would argue the most important, is coming together to enjoy singing with other people, no matter what your experience, no matter where you've come from, and uh, if you've sung in choirs all your life, or if you've only sung in the shower, everyone is welcome in these choirs. And the third aspect here in Barcelona is to try and create a community, an, an international community, uh, which encompasses many people from all over the world, many people from Catalonia, many people from Spain, and then from England, from America, and from many other countries too. So those are the three reasons why I created Barcelona English Choir. And really, for me, if I had a, a euro for every person who told me I can't sing, or I only sing in the shower, or you don't want to hear me sing, uh, I would be a very rich man, because everyone feels like they can't sing especially when they've been to school and have been told, you can't sing, please mime, don't sing in the school choir. Uh, so there's a real difficulty with people's experience of singing, especially at schools. And what I really wanted to do is to open that up and really show people that it's completely possible to engage with singing, no matter what your experience. So just to sort of investigate a little bit more my wider reasons for, for doing this and, and the, the deeper reasons for being part of a choir like this, um, there are many, many health benefits uh, for singing. There's physical health benefits from singing. There's also mental health benefits from singing. And in my work in England, uh, I spent a lot of time working with older people with Alzheimer's and dementia, uh, and also uh, all kinds of other difficulties. And it's no surprise that engaging with music helps you to live a better life. 
And that sounds like a, a very simple thing to say, but it is very true. There's a huge amount of research done into the effect of singing on your brain uh, and the effect of singing on your general health. So really, that's, that's what drives me throughout this. So I, in Barcelona, I'm working with uh, many different people from the age of 16 all the way through to 80 is our oldest choir member. And to create a community that includes uh, such a wide age range and such a wide variety of people from such a wide variety of experiences, I think is a really, it's a really special thing to be part of. And, and for me, it's, it's why I love doing what I do. And as I'm sure you can see on the screen behind, uh, we do concerts, we do flash mobs. Uh, so we go into a particular location and we suddenly start singing. We did one in uh, Mercat de la Barceloneta and we've done one in Plaza Catalunya. Um, and it's really just trying to create that community, trying to create that sense of fun, that sense of enjoyment. And also, the community is absolutely at the core of everything we do, trying to make sure that people feel completely welcome, whatever their ability level. There are so many uh, experiences that people have with music on a professional level or a semi-professional level where they're told that they're not good enough. Uh, and also, people at school are really... Uh, the, the message is very often negative, uh, has been in the past very negative when you're engaging with music at schools. And so it's trying to break down those barriers, really, and try and encourage everyone in the world to sing. I'm sure someone wrote a song about that. But there's many, many opportunities to, to enjoy yourself and to feel better physically if you engage with singing. So that's really what we're about. And uh, that's where I'd like to finish this little bit of the presentation. Thank you very much. Now, let's come here. And tell me, how was it you had that idea? Because you arrived to Barcelona, you didn't speak English at the time. I, I did speak English, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 Sp <laughs> Spanish, you know, my brain. Albert, please. Um, yes, you didn't speak uh, Spanish or Catalan at the time. And you say, I want to create this choir. How was that process? Because Yes, well, I very rapidly learned uh, Castellano and uh, was learning Catalan from the very beginning, or trying to learn Catalan from the very beginning. Um, but really, it wasn't, that wasn't a barrier uh, for me because I think if you, wherever you arrive, wherever you put yourself, you find the opportunities to make, to make things happen. So the way that we started it was, was through various markets, various um, exchanges that were happening across the city, cultural exchanges, uh, the international community, uh, language schools, those kind of areas we publicized, or I, I publicized what was going to happen, and that's how we really started it off. Just so what I'm seeing is that on top of your musical ability, you have an entrepreneurial spirit. I, you I, are I, I an found, entrepreneur. Yeah. I've found an entrepreneurial spirit, yes. I think it's always good when you, when you remove yourself. I, I had a very steady job for seven years uh, on a contract, full-time working, and to just remove all of that and put yourself somewhere and try and make something happen, I think is the first time I've done it in my life and I'd highly recommend it because you find skills that you didn't realize you had. And this, I think this is very important for, for all artists because probably we, when we are trained as musicians or actresses or whatever, we are training the art but we, nobody tell us anything about how to sell and promote our art. Absolutely, absolutely right. Yeah, there's, there's many professional musicians and I'm sure professionals in all art forms that are incredibly skilled individuals, uh, but it's, it's trying to find your own path and trying to find a way uh, to create that, to turn that into a career. It's, it's hard, it's a hard thing to do. And I have seen that you have used uh, technology like internet very wisely also. It had been a very important tool. How was, how have been that for you? Huh? So I, again, for me, is, this is, was my first experience of, of, of social media really in a professional sense. And so using uh, Meetup, which is a fantastic website, Facebook and, and all kinds of other, other uh, pathways, we just tried to create uh, a bit of a sort of a bit of an excitement about this starting. And the same goes for, for what we do every week. I try and make sure that we always have a really good photographer. We get lots of stuff filmed. There's lots of social media contact. Uh, and contact. the flash mobs also. And the flash mobs too. Yeah, the flash mobs, absolutely. Um, and I think they're just ways, I mean, the main goal of all of these things is, is for the participants, the people who are singing in the choirs. It's, that's the, the main goal, is that they have a, a positive experience, whether it's a concert or a flash mob or, or whatever it might be. That has to be at the center all the time. And people often talk about the difference between the product and the process uh, in, in, in uh, arts work. And for me, they have to be really equally balanced. The process has to be just as important as the product itself. 
And when you reach the product, that has to feel like you've really achieved something, like you've really gone beyond what you thought you were able to do. But if you just focus on the product, the final performance, the final thing... Yeah, you lose the enjoyment. You lose the enjoyment, precisely that. And for me, I mean, I'm very informal. When, when we do concerts, when we do rehearsals, I'm always very informal uh, with the audience or whoever it is because I just think that it's so important that people feel welcome and relaxed and can take part in their own way. And it's so beautiful, that idea that everybody can sing because many people from since childhood have been thought that they cannot sing and they kind of lose that opportunity to, to enjoy life in a different way. How, how is that you convince people or how do you empower people to just sing? Uh, you, you have to do a lot of convincing. After you have to really tell them, no, I promise you, I, I'm sure you can sing. There are, there are, there are about 4% of people who, who have a, a medical condition, which means they can't, they can't pitch, they can't do a tone. But that's 4%. Okay, so the majority of people, they really can. There's all kinds of different experience that people have, and people come to singing from, a, from one place or another, and sometimes you have to do a bit more training with some people than others. But if you're part of a warm community, a supportive community, then you have the possibility to, to let that happen in its own time. How many people there are right now in your choirs? Because it's not only one, it's how many choirs, how many people? So there are three choirs that are part of the Barcelona English Choir, and there are a total of 120 people. My God, so you are, how many rehearsals a week? There's three rehearsals a week, so, uh, so of varying sizes, but that's the idea. And it's, it's about uh, 70. 70% Spanish Catalan, 15% uh, English American, and 15% from the rest of the world. Um, I, I'm feeling that this is just the starting point for other things because just through singing, they become friends, they uh, create community, uh, create activities, and you are also now organizing some other things. Absolutely, yeah. So, so it's always at the center of, of what we do is to try and create a community and many people uh, make new contacts whether it be for, for work or social contacts it's a, it's a great it's a great way of meeting people of course like like any new couples <laughs> <laughs> not yet but yes i'll let you know um but there's there's all sorts of uh, of ways which people can interact but also i think uh, for me it's it's just trying to create as many different experiences for those participants and as many many varied experiences for those participants. You recently went to England. That's right. So we, we did a, a, an exchange with a, a choir that I used to work with in the UK, in the north of England, in, uh, in the middle of the countryside uh, in the north of England. And uh, that was a fantastic experience. I took 25 of our singers from here. Uh, and it was almost, all, almost all of them Catalan. And uh, we exchanged with a choir in the UK and we got to sing at an amazing venue. We had a fantastic cultural exchange. It was a, a brilliant experience. And is there any added value that you feel you have just for the fact of being in Barcelona or in Catalonia? Something that this environment... Yes. For me, I think Barcelona is an incredibly lively city with so, much, so many arts activities going on and especially singing. Um, in my other life, in my other work, uh, I accompany uh, a choir, uh, several choirs, uh, Catalan choirs of the uh, well, Gen Gran, and uh, it's a fantastic experience to, to play uh, all of the songs that they're singing and to, to see there's so many choir festivals that happen in this area, in Catalonia. There's such a variety of singing too, so uh, it's, it's a brilliant place to be for a choir, for a choir leader, absolutely. It's an, uh, yeah, an appreciation for, for this. Voices. There's definitely an appreciation for singing in all its forms, absolutely. And now I have a question. Somebody said, how could she uh, join the choir? What is the process? The process of joining the choir is, is just contacting me, which is through our, either through our Facebook page or, or by email. It's just Barcelona English Choir at gmail.com. Um, oh, and audition requirements? There's absolutely zero audition requirements, so no, no audition whatsoever. Completely open. Anyone, really anyone can join. My goodness, you will have a, a, a bombard, they will bombard you with emails after this <laughs> thing on, on TV. Oh, on there's, the there's plenty of room. We've got lots of room. So yeah, absolutely. Come along. <laughs> um, there are many, how many women and men, the percentage? Yes. Uh, so as with most, uh, as with a lot of choirs, uh, the percentage of men to women is, is slightly, it's not exactly equal. So we have about... Uh, Say, for example, the Monday group, there are 70 people and uh, probably 60 of those. 60 of those are women and 10 of those are men, which is kind of normal for, for, for choirs, for community choirs anyway. 
There is a question about your social work. Have you thought about uh, continuing doing something social or related with music here Abs in Barcelona or in Catalonia? Absolutely. I, I really, at the moment, I'm trying to work with a couple of people to, to form a project working with older people because I, I really miss working with older people in the way that I was in the UK. So I'm doing some research with a couple of Catalan friends to look at going into care homes and, and working with, with carers and uh, their families. Um, so there's various things that I'm trying to trying to uh, work out just at the moment. So in terms of business opportunities, I mean, just talking about your business, not music, you have plenty of them. So yeah, if you, uh, putting aside that that last example, yeah, there, there are, I think there's opportunities to work with businesses, uh, absolutely to to form choirs in the workplace. That's very that that is currently quite a big thing in the UK. Uh, going into a, an organisation and creating a choir uh, as a way of bonding teams together, of, of bringing, bringing staff together, absolutely. It's a, it's a great way of, uh, of unifying. Uh, and then also working with kids, I'd, I'd love to do some What I'm stuff. really pointing is the fact that you are a great example for artists and people, who, creators, who think in this context we are now the crisis, where everybody is just waiting for the government to give them money or just stop because they cannot do anything, but you are showing us that yes, you can come from a different country and create your own business, develop a good business model. I think so I, have, I have to say that um, I found Barcelona Activa really useful. That's where I went as soon as I arrived uh, to talk about how to set up a business here. And I'd really recommend that to anyone who's watching in Barcelona. It's a fantastic resource mm -hmm. um, for advice on business, uh, on business startup. Um, but no, I, I do think, as I was saying earlier, I think you are a cultural entrepreneur then you just have to find you have to find the the niche the 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 gap which you can you can enter um and i think often when you're working in community work or social work it's it's hard sometimes to think in a business fashion because you're thinking about the people you're working with you're not really thinking about making much money you're thinking about just getting by and then doing the work you need to do but they can be but combined. they can they can be combined absolutely and it, you just have to find the right way and you have to be be aware of all the uh, of how you can give back as well I, I think it's incredibly important last question they said when is your next performance <laughs> well we've just we've uh, literally just finished uh, more or less we've just finished for this year so it probably will be christmas but i'll keep you posted on our uh, on our facebook page and you have a, I mean, uh, uh, schedule of for the year. Do you, you go out on vacations for uh, August and you come back? Come back, yeah. We come back at the end of September. So then we have a, a couple of sessions where people can come and try it uh, and just see what they think, and then and then people commit for a slightly slightly longer amount of time. So when you go to the choir, you commit first day, or you for how long you have to commit? The, the first day you just go, you try it. If you don't like it. Don't worry. Uh, and then uh, next term, it's going to be you commit for um, either a month or three months at a time. So in in three terms, but it's it's really accessible. The price is it works out at around five euros for two hours of singing. So this is really accessible. So it's not too expensive. So that and that that's another very important factor. I think uh, I think you have to you have to price it right. <laughs> Otherwise, you don't get anyone coming. That's great. So I really love this fact that everybody can sing because singing is a way of just enjoying life. Absolutely true. Yeah. Good. Great. Thank you very, very much, Ed. And I will ask you to just be here, and I will invite the other guests to be on stage with us.